live and alert on the north side of the dirt. It is your man D-Real coming at you with another B-Real with D-Real, where entertainment is what I do. Now, before I do what I do, get off into what I get off into, I need you to do what you always do. Mm. Comment, like, subscribe, and share to the B-Real with D-Real page so that when new alerts come out, you get some. Like this one right here. If you digging what a brother shoveling, put some dirt in my bucket. Comment, like, subscribe, and share to the Be Real with D Real page. What do I want to talk about? I want to talk about the characters and events in the comic book Avengers Forever, number six. Okay. There is a character in there called the Vibranium Man. Now, they call him the Vibranium Man in the comic, but in the actual story itself, that iteration of T'Challa, yeah, that was T'Challa, is called the Sky Spider. And the Sky Spider is fighting King Killmonger, who you may remember from Avengers Volume 8, number 50, in December of 2021, which introduced a multiversal Masters of Evil. Now, this multiversal Masters of Evil were going through different universes. Uh, and they were destroying these death locks because these death locks were going to keep them from taking over all the multiverse because they are connected to someone called the Avenger Prime. And these Masters of Evils don't want him to get to Avenger Prime. Now, I don't know if this Sky Spider is the Avenger Prime, but he certainly does have some interesting powers. Of course, hailing from another universe, uh, Sky Spider, of course, appears to have the same abilities as Spider-Man, um, including fire and webbing. I don't, okay, <laughs> okay, yeah, let, 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 let's roll with that. But anyway, he is the last Wakanda. At least that's what it says in the story. And he's on a mission to kill King Killmonger. Good luck with that, because King Killmonger is in a destroyer armor, wielding the axe of Bashinga, which he has renamed Storm Slayer. Now, he has taken out tons of Wakandans and tons of T'Challas throughout the multiverse. So the story basically boils down to Sky Spider and Killmonger finally squaring off and Killmonger getting the better of T'Challa and banishing him into a star. You would think being banished into a star would kill T'Challa. Instead, he emerges like this. That version of T'Challa is called the Star Panther. Jason Aaron is doing this story, but... uh. I got to give Jason two thumbs down for those names. The Sky Spider, lame. The Star Panther, lamer. Um, yeah, just called him T'Challa, man. I mean, nothing else. Uh, I don't know. Um, and that was the end of the story when he emerges from this vibranium cocoon that he's been in inside of this star and he's absorbed all of the power of this star and he merges basically T'Challa Superman. 
okay? But we don't get to see him flex, as I said, because that's the end of the story. There are several ways this story could end. I mean, you know, the way it could turn out. I mean, one, he could, in fact, given those powers, he could, in fact, be Avenger Prime. Uh, and he's the guy the Deathlocks are looking for to deal with these masters of evil. Or the way I feel like, and I don't want to go this deep off into it, but the, the treatment that T'Challa has been receiving lately in comics, I mean, they are just dumbing him down, disrespecting and, and emasculating him all the way around. So maybe this Star Panther is a way of them kind of saying, uh, we're sorry for punking T'Challa. We're sorry for nerfing T'Challa. Here, we're going to give you a funky, fresh, dope iteration of T'Challa. All powerful. Okay, supposedly all powerful. But he didn't become all powerful until the last damn page of the comic. So we don't really know how powerful S Star Panther Ugh, cringe saying that name. Ugh. Um, we don't know how powerful he really is. So will we see more of the Star Panther? Will the Star Panther make an appearance in the mainstream Avengers comics and not, you know, because Avengers Forever is about different Avengers in different universes. Okay, it's the comic was put together purely to cater to the concept of the multiverse, which in and of itself is cool, but it opens up a lot of possibilities that folks may want explored. And I know the Star Panther is definitely something that needs to be explored given the current treatment of T'Challa. We need to see the Star Panther flex. We need to see the Star Panther bust King Killmonger across his head and break the axe of Bashinga or take the axe of Bashinga. Either or, the Star Panther needs to be, he needs to get his flex on. We need to see what he can do. I mean, it's nice that you got him coming out of a cocoon and looking super powerful and having a nice costume and all of that, but we want to see what the Star Panther can do. Now, we, we can look at this and say, the glass is half empty or the glass is half full. I don't know. Because it's the multiverse, I have always been of the mind that relegating mainstream characters to a alternate universe existence is a cop-out. And from what I'm seeing and hearing about the John Ridley run on Black Panther, they're getting ready to depose T'Challa, take him off the throne since they become a democratic republic. Um, and I guess that's cool for mainstream stuff. But I mean, even with, you know, countries like the UK being democratic, they still have a monarch. That monarch's a figurehead, but that monarch is treated with dignity and respect. Why can't T'Challa be relegated to such a role if you're going to make Wakanda a democratic republic? Okay. Um, something for you to think about, Mr. Ridley, while you are doing what you're doing on uh, Black Panther. It it. It ain't, it ain't showing T'Challa in the best light, to say the least. Um, and I've been doing a lot of research and looking over, you know, T'Challa. And T'Challa's always had friction with his people. He's always had friction with others. But he always managed to work it out in an amicable way for everyone. And if he didn't, he'd leave for a little while. Go hang with the Avengers. Go do some solo stuff. You know, not neglect his kingdom necessarily, but take a break from his kingdom. It is what it is. But anyway, back to Avengers Forever. Um, I hope that we see more of the Star Panther. And I hope that it wasn't just a, we're going to lay this off on you and say, 
I, this is our last hurrah for T'Challa, as it were, because, you know, we get ready to make little of him in the comics or more less of him in the comics, make him scarce, in other words. Um, and and while, while we prop Wakanda up, that's a whole nother video right there, and I'm not going to get into that. But suffice to say, um, overall, for me, the Star Panther beggars more. More discovery. More exploration into what he can and can't do. How powerful is he? You got him coming out looking like Sentry. Is he Sentry powerful? Is he Superman powerful? Is he Gladiator powerful? How powerful is he? What what are his, his abilities? What can he and what can he not do? Does he have weaknesses? You know, we need to explore all of that. Give this Star Panther some parameters. And it would also be nice if he could travel between universes and meet up with the mainstream T'Challa. Mm, look at that. I came up with an idea and I didn't even think hard. What do y'all think about the Sky Spider slash Star Panther in uh, recent issues of Avengers Forever? Drop it in the comments. And as always, I will be coming at you with another one of them other ones. And until I do, yo, y'all, be good. Be good, each other.